Good morning. Today is Thursday, in the fourth week of Easter, 7th of May, and it's an ordinary feast day of the Easter period. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness, and in those who have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Gospel continues to be from the Gospel of John, the discourse as it's known as the Last Supper, and its various paragraphs from it, following up each of the statements, I am the gate, I am light. So today's Gospel is John chapter 13, verses 16 to 20. After he had washed the feet of his disciples, Jesus said to them, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master, no messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I am not speaking about all of you, I know the ones I have chosen, but what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now, before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send, welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, perhaps the second part is reassuring his disciples, his apostles, that he does know that Judas will betray him and they're not to lose heart. But the main line in today's Gospel that is so important and is the one I'm going to talk about is the one that says, now that you know this, that's washing his feet, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. Yesterday, the Pope released a video where he spoke about his intentions that we are asked to pray for during the month of May. And the focus is on deacons, and in particular permanent deacons. And the Pope speaks about the role of diaconal service in the church. Now, I'm a permanent deacon, uh, ordained by Cardinal Cormac in 2008. And I serve both in the Diocese of Westminster and, of course, above all, in the parish of St. Edward the Confessor. And the whole role of being a deacon is to witness to what everybody is part of their baptism is challenged, invited, required to do. And that's to follow in the footsteps of Jesus the servant. Because at the heart of the Christian message, and following Jesus, is this idea of service. And there's an intimate link between the Eucharist and service. In the first three Gospels, at the Last Supper, Jesus inaugurates the Eucharist. This is my bread, this is my body. But in the fourth Gospel, St. John's Gospel, where that moment comes, that's where Jesus gets up, puts an apron around him, and washes the feet of his disciples, and says, this is the way followers of mine must be, that this is how to belong to the body of Christ. So serving others is our intimate involvement in what we believe is the Eucharist, receiving the body and blood of Christ and making it real. The role of the permanent deacon is actually only a small part of the idea of diaconal service, because every bishop, every cardinal, but above all every priest, is also an ordained deacon, and part of their role is also diaconal service. And our priests are great examples of people who give their lives serving their community, their parish, the area where they live. 
and the heart of today's gospel, the line I read out, now that you know this, washing each other's feet as the heart of what he gives us an example, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. Now the Greek word there, happiness, is the Greek word makaroi. Sorry, I've got that wrong, makaroi. Um, but it, it, happiness is just, it's too small a word for what Jesus is referring to. It's being heaped full of blessings. You will be heaped full of blessings if you behave accordingly and serve each other. And so, in great trust, we believe that by serving each other, we will be heaped full of blessings. And I have to say, in my life, I've experienced this. The big thing, and we're going to need it more than ever in the coming months in London, is that our communities, there are so many different ways in which we're going to need to serve each other. Because as the lockdown lifts, we're going to find that socially, economically, the lockdown has left huge problems and huge areas where we need to step in and serve each other. There will be unemployment, there will be debt, there will be mental health issues, there will be social issues of how we get on with each other, there will be security issues. And we all need to serve each other as best we can, showing that by serving each other, loving each other, finding ways in which we can help each other to lead a life that's more fully human, a life of safety, a life of purpose, a life of joy with each other. In that way, we too will be heaped full of blessings as we follow in the diaconal service, which is part of our baptism. The whole point of ordination is to give an example of what is meant to be part of the, the way of life for everybody who follows Christ. We serve each other in love, following Jesus who washed the feet of his disciples. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response to the bidding prayers is, May the Lord Jesus be our life. May the Lord Jesus be our life. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father. In Christ he has given all his children the pledge of resurrection. May the Lord Jesus be our life. Father, by a pillar of fire led you led your people through the desert. May the risen Christ be the light of our lives. May the Lord Jesus be our life. Through the voice of Moses you spoke on the mountain. May the risen Christ be our word of life. May the Lord Jesus be our life. With the gift of manna you fed your wandering people. May the risen Christ be our bread from heaven. May the Lord Jesus be our life. You drew water from the rock to save your children. May the risen Christ fill us with his spirit. May the Lord Jesus be our life. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. Lord God, you restore human nature to a dignity higher than you gave it at creation. Look with favour on the mystery of your love. Keep your gifts of grace intact in those whose life you have renewed in baptism, the sacrament of new birth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye. Have a good day.